In 1829, Eastern State Penitentiary shows that tight surveillance is the key to building big prisons. But as prisoners become ever more ingenious, simply watching them is not enough. Engineers building Alcatraz, the world's most secure prison, have to make sure that its cells are totally escape-proof. In the 1930s, America is hit by a wave of organized crime. The FBI spends many years trying to catch and convict mobsters like Al Capone. When they finally arrest him, they must make sure he stays locked up. To contain this new breed of super gangster, the US government plans to build a super prison. They find the perfect location, an island in the middle of San Francisco Bay called Alcatraz. On the island is an old military fort sitting in a deep pit cut into the rock. Workers demolish the old building and build three stories of steel reinforced concrete cell blocks on top. None of the 600 cells has any contact to the outer walls. They're a prison within a prison. Each cell is fitted with unbreakable steel gates, which have no keys, but can be operated remotely. Alcatraz is the biggest concrete structure in the world, and supposedly the most secure prison on the planet. Bob Luke arrives in Alcatraz in 1954, looking forward to 12 years on the rock. The boat made a wide turn, and then I could see the island. And uh, first I saw the houses down the bottom, and then uh, looked up and the prison was sitting up on top of the island. So that was my first glimpse of Alcatraz. It looked like to me like a French chateau, but I knew that this was an old country home. This was gonna be my prison for several years. Of course, we all had heard of Alcatraz. It was going to be the end of the line. Alcatraz is the last stop for America's most dangerous and violent offenders. This is my mug shot that was taken uh, the first day I got here uh, in April 1954. It was just a young thug that beat you up just as soon as look at you, hold up banks. I was a burglar, a uh, car thief, served 11 or 12 years in prison for all that. So uh, I, was, I was a different guy. To keep people like young Bob safely locked up, engineers fit the cell doors with an extremely tough kind of prison bar. When they opened the prison up in 1934, these all were done over with two steels. You can't cut these bars, even if you had a hacksaw blade. They're impossible. There's a heavy, hardened tool steel inside this bar. I used to come in at 12 o'clock at midnight and walk these tiers counting, and I always felt fairly safe, you know. The doors aren't just unbreakable, they lock without keys. They give a whole new meaning to the term, the slammer. We've got 13 doors that we can open from this one box. And the officer would yell down the row here, rack them, just giving them a heads up that the doors are gonna be closing. Because that's where you get the true sound of the slammer. Rack them! And this is part of the punishments of Alcatraz here in this door, open and close every day. Well, the first time you hear that door slam, it's uh, like, uh, being entombed, you know, you just know that this is going to be it for a while. Right up. Alcatraz looks like the perfect prison, a concrete fortress brimming with technology. It doesn't even need a fence around it, as it's surrounded by the icy currents of San Francisco Bay. When I used to work the towers, I used to see logs maybe 
eight, nine feet long going out with the tide as if it had an outboard motor on it. Out it would go. Oh, sure, I wanted to try to escape from anywhere. But I always thought it was impossible to try here. So I just give up even, uh, you know, thinking about it. Despite all the technology at Alcatraz, three inmates go missing in 1962. All that's left of them are three dummies made of soap, toilet paper, and hair stolen from the barbershop. And of course, the big holes they've scraped into the concrete walls of their cells with a spoon. The cells are back to back with a corridor in between, nothing but pipes. They crawl right up to the top. And once they got up there, they can't be seen. It must have took a year or two years of continuous planning. Kind of amazing how that was allowed to happen. Despite a massive search operation, there's no trace of the prisoners. I don't believe anyone ever escaped from Alcatraz. Most people don't realize the closest these inmates ever got to water was to take a shower. Now you could be imagined panic-stricken two or three o'clock in the morning, jumping into that bay. No way. My impression is that if they got into the water, they may have got out, a hundred yards or so, and then goodbye. Whether the men escaped or not, the fate of Alcatraz is sealed. An investigation reveals that the supposedly escape-proof concrete is to blame for the breakout. Alcatraz uses seawater to flush the toilets. It trickles from leaky pipes and seeps into the walls. Brick chips in the concrete soak up the water and swell like sponges, wedging open fissures in the walls. Eventually, the reinforcing steel bars expand as they rust and crack the concrete even more. After 30 years, the formerly super strong walls are so crumbly that they're not even a match for a spoon. The leaky concrete would cost millions to repair. So in 1963, Alcatraz closes its doors for the last time. But the lessons from the rock live on. Yeah.